Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Just imagine that you were the man in high school, on your high school basketball team, which was one of the best teams in your region. Then just imagine you go to college, and you're the man in college, right? You dominate in college. Now, just imagine you go to the pros and after not quite getting a real opportunity with a couple of teams, because after all, you're a rookie, just imagine that you finally get an opportunity to play extended minutes with a team and then you're the man again. And just imagine if afterwards people literally treated you as if they had such low expectations for you that they're surprised even given your history of dominance, high school, college, right? You know, where you've literally been lead scorer. You've been beating guys off the dribble. You know your passing skills. You know your court vision, right? You are determined to make it in the NBA because you're accustomed to dominating. And just imagine, after you start to show signs of being able to do what you've done in high school, college, and the D-League, just imagine if the press treated you as if they were expecting you to be a complete scrub, even though you're 6'3". Well, almost 6'3", right? Even though you can beat guys off the dribble, even though your game is driving to the basket, just imagine if the press treated you as if they expected you to be a complete scrub in part because of your racial background. Would you be offended? You know, let me just say this about the Jeremy Lin story. People need to wake up and realize that the idea of this guy coming out of nowhere completely ignores the guy's background. The guy's always been a baller, right? The guy was a baller in Palo Alto, in high school. The guy was a baller at Harvard, right? And so the guy now, the guy was a baller in the, N, uh, in the NBA's developmental league. So now you have a guy who, quite frankly, has higher expectations of himself than it seems the New York media does. Now, let me just say this, don't want to get too controversial, but let me just say this as a minority. You know, while he's getting the praise from people, while he's playing the corporate game, because he, you know, let's face it, has a corporate employer, right? That employer has corporate ads all over the arena just like by the way I'm playing the corporate game here I have ads in my videos right his employer has ads all over the arena he knows that his real job as a basketball player is to actually help his basketball team sell tickets sell sponsorships sell ad space make money right? The NBA is a business, right? And so Jeremy Lin's going to have to smile for the camera, right? He's going to have to, you know, aw shucks it and, you know, look like he's grateful to be there. But I think every minority, black, Asian, Latino, deep down as we're looking around playing our game, right? Just out there competing with everybody else, getting the kind of success that we've had in the past and then having media members surprised because of our backgrounds, I know part of Jeremy Lin has to be looking around and thinking to himself, man, are these people, this anti-Asian, are these people, this racial, I won't use the word racist. Let's use the word racial, right? Because the bottom line is Jeremy Lin on a deep level is probably insulted. If, if this media fawning continues, he certainly will be. 
that he's being treated differently than every other rookie who's out there or second year player who's out there trying to make things happen, right? I mean, you know, all I'm saying is he knows there are others who have come in the league and who've excelled. And he has to know, and it's a real Faustian bargain. He has to know that one of the big reasons for all of the hype he's receiving, just like it was with Jackie Robinson in 1947, just like it was with Tiger Woods, right? A lot of the hype Jeremy Lin is receiving has to do with the fact that he's Asian. And all I can say is as an Asian ball player, he himself knows that his ethnicity has nothing to do with his game, right? The real story is the reaction of the people around him to his ethnicity. All he wanted was an opportunity, right? Once he had that opportunity, I'm sure because he dominated at every stage of his basketball career, I'm sure he had the confidence to believe that he could deliver. Let me just point out, too, that this ridiculous idea that it's unusual for Asians to play basketball really is directly contradicted by the game between China and the United States in the Beijing Olympics, a game so big that President George W. Bush actually sat behind the American bench. And if you pull up a video of that game, you're going to see that the Chinese team came to play. These guys weren't there to be on the same court with the Americans. They came to beat the Americans, right? Asian ball players already know that they have elite level skills <clears throat> and that the only thing keeping them from participating at the highest stage is politics and access, right? With the same facilities and with the advances of video distribution and technology and stuff like that, I'm sure these Asian guys who played on the Chinese Olympic team felt they could compete with anybody, right? Certainly, they were on the court that day trying to steal the ball from Kobe and LeBron, right? And that game was very competitive. So I'm a bit surprised after that game, given that, you know, basketball is huge in China and we've had you know, Chinese players who are above average in the NBA already like Yao Ming. I'm surprised that in 2012, we're treating an Asian baller like Jeremy Lin, who literally, you know, for his career has averaged over 20 before getting to the pros. We're treating him as if we're surprised that he can dribble a basketball past the rock and shoot the basketball. Come on. I mean, isn't, you know, after Jeremy Lin smiles for the camera for a couple of years, you know, while he's on his way to getting the big contract, I'm sure sooner or later he's going to be thinking to himself, what did these people expect me to do? You know, why did these people have such low expectations of me? I'm sure Doug Williams quarterback for the Redskins, quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, must have asked himself that a generation ago, right? Isn't the real story with Jeremy Lin not that he can play basketball because we've had other Asian players who could play basketball and we've seen Asians in international competition on the same court hold their own against NBA players. That's not the story, is it? Isn't the real story here on a deep level? why the press is so condescending and why the public had such low expectations of Jeremy Lin. 
Let me just say, um, I went to school near Palo Alto, where Jeremy Lin played high school ball. I actually attended a couple of Golden State Warrior games when Jeremy Lin was a rookie, right? And Jeremy Lin wasn't playing the level of basketball he is now because, of course, he was a rookie, but he was aggressive. And when I saw him, I had no doubt that in his mind, his attitude is, hey, I'm a baller. I've always dominated. Just show me what I need to do at this level, and I'm going to try to dominate it. Let me just say, you know, I know he's selling sneakers and toasters because he's an NBA player, and that's what NBA players do. But I'm sure he's privately thinking, look, you know, when Carmelo joins this team, I hope I still get my touches when it comes to shooting the basketball. Right? I mean, he can say the right thing in the media. The bottom line is he's always been the alpha dog on every basketball team that he's been a member of before the NBA. So you're talking about a guy who's 6'2", 6'3", can beat guys off the dribble, has his entire life, can pass the basketball, and is accustomed to being the alpha dog. Right? That's who Jeremy Lin is. That's his real background. He didn't come from nowhere. He came from scoring 30 per game at Harvard. Right? That's that's who he is. He's a gunner. Right? And so and so all I'm saying, all I'm saying is as I watch this story unfold, and as I watch people get criticized for pointing out that there's a racial element to the story, let me just say, sooner or later, why don't we ask the hard question? Why do we in this post Yao Ming era have such low expectations of Jeremy Lin? I know he's doing some great things. Understand, basketball players typically improve after their rookie year, right? And I know Jeremy Lin's having, you know, a nice run here. All I'm saying is I don't see people completely losing it to this extent for Ricky Rubio, right? And I'm sure Jeremy Lin feels he can compete with anyone. So let's not have it where, you know, he goes out, he plays well, and we're fawning on him for scoring 25 points when other guys that night have scored 30 points. Because really, what we're practicing when we do that is what President Bush, who sat behind the U.S. bench, used to call the soft bigotry of low expectations. You know, in a few years, just like European players have gone from Drazen Petrovic and all of us praising him, like